guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about tracking macros for the first time, even before you have a food scale, and I'm going to explain what macro tracking is, what the hype's about, and why it might be helpful for you. Maybe you've heard of flexible dieting, IIFYM, or if it fits your macros. Maybe you've seen your favorite fitspos talk about tracking macros, or why they stopped and now follow intuitive eating. It might seem really confusing and overwhelming, but I'm here to offer some relief. So, what are macros? Macros are short for macronutrients, of which there are four. There's protein, carbohydrates, fat, and alcohol. What is macro tracking? Macro tracking is a tool used for precision, especially important for fat loss, to understand how many calories you're eating and what those calories are comprised of. The first origin to this movement started with truly the IIFYM organization, and I'm going to read you a quote straight from their website. If It Fits Your Macros was haphazardly started by a few competitive bodybuilders that grew tired of eating bland and boring food when dieting for a bodybuilding contest. The so-called bro or clean foods. Why did macro tracking become so popular? It's become so popular because mainly it works. And secondly, it allows for an understanding of what you're eating, how to make certain swaps, and how to truly be more aware because I don't think any of us really know what 10 grams of carbohydrates looks like or 10 grams of protein looks like unless we do it and weigh it on a scale over and over and over. There's actually a ton of research that Precision Nutrition cites that we overestimate our total caloric amount by 30 to 50 percent. So needless to say we're pretty bad at eyeballing or estimating our food. Another reason why people track macros is because before macro tracking people that were trying to go on a diet followed meal plans. And meal plans, while effective and can be budget friendly, they are inflexible, they get really, really boring, and honestly, everyone has really different food preferences. If someone tells me to eat quinoa every single day for lunch, I'm probably going to end up hating quinoa and swear off quinoa for the rest of my life, which is a fun fact and true story. So you might be wondering, if creating a calorie deficit is key to weight loss, then why should we track macros versus counting calories? The simple answer is, you're going to get different results based on what your body does with those calories. Sometimes this can be the reason why you're not able to break through a fat loss plateau, or it feels impossible to lose weight. Maybe this is because your diet is comprised mostly of fat, or mostly of carbohydrates. As a vegan, this was definitely my pitfall. For some goals, like getting really lean for a bodybuilding show, it might be better to eat more protein and more carbohydrates and less fat. For other goals, it might be better to eat more fat and protein and less carbohydrates. This is where you hear people arguing over what the optimal macro split is. The TLDR is you'll get to the right spot if your calories or energy balance are where they should be, either in a deficit, maintenance, or surplus for your goal, but having more or less of one macronutrient or another will encourage your body to do certain things, like build more muscle, store more fat, or recover faster or slower. Let's say that you ran your numbers through a calculator or you hired a coach. You've downloaded a macro tracking app like MyFitnessPal and you're eager but nervous to start. Let's say you ordered your food scale on Amazon and you're waiting those 48 hours for it to get delivered. We're gonna start with pre-packaged foods. Now, it might not be the healthiest or the most whole foods diet, but it will help you be much more accurate to understand how many calories you're consuming. Let's start with a protein bar. So I'm gonna show you guys right here. We're gonna open up my fitness pal. We're gonna press on the diary tab and we're going to press add food. I'm going to search for pro bar peanut butter chocolate. Now I've scanned this in the past so it shows up at the top of my history. And when I see here, I'm going to verify that it is indeed 9 fat, 32 carb, and 20 protein. And it is. And the calorie amount is correct, so I'm going to add that food. Now you can use their scan feature, which is this little barcode here, to find a food and you can scan the barcode. I've been trying this a few times, but for this particular protein bar, it hasn't been working. In this case, I would just search it, or you can create your own food and you can enter the macros that way. Congratulations! You just tracked your first item ever in MyFitnessPal, and now you know how to search for to add foods or scan foods that you already have. So I will encourage you over the next few days before your food scale arrives to start just by tracking prepackaged foods. And one more pro tip I'm going to leave you guys with is to measure your fats with a food scale over a tablespoon. 
So the reason I say this is that to be accurate with tracking with an actual measurement spoon is you have to level it off so perfectly and oftentimes these are actually bigger than what the weight in grams is. So for me, just scooping peanut butter out of the jar and having one tablespoon, when I actually go ahead and like weigh it on the scale, it's equivalent to two tablespoons. So I highly, highly recommend weighing your fat sources, whether that be oils, butters, um, nut butters, etc. Until your food scale arrives, it's okay. You can use your measuring spoons, but level them off. Don't cheat. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that it was informative and helpful and helped break down some of the confusion. And if you guys have any more questions about tracking macros, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section below and I'd be happy to answer them or make more videos on this topic. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.